Episode 1. I'm Emily Valdez, 24-year-old virgin, college student, and hired surrogate to Colton Collins, the sexy, enigmatic bachelor of the famous Collins family. I'm not the type of girl who treasures her virginity. Having sex with Colton is the best way to get pregnant with his child. He says he didn't pay me to take my virginity. I said I can handle it. I had no idea what I was getting into. Congratulations. I usually like letters that begin this way. It was on my acceptance letter to NYU, on my scholarship award letter. Letters that begin with congratulations are a good thing. This is a good thing. I nod slowly as I stare at the letter in front of me. My hands tremble, making the letter shake, so I set it on the counter and pace around the kitchen. This letter isn't the kind of good you know you have to do, but don't want to. Like when you know you have to clean your bedroom, but you'd rather lay in bed and watch TV. Or when you know you have to do your homework, but you want to go watch a new movie at the theater. That kind of good. The kind that has a worthwhile result, but involves a sacrifice. In this case, a huge sacrifice. Emily? I look up and realize that Peter, my roommate, is looking at me. Yeah, I say, reaching for the letter quickly. Are you all right? He asks, eyeing me with his dark eyes. Yeah, just tired. I'm going to take a nap, I announce, making my way to my room. I met Peter almost two years ago, at the beginning of my junior year in New York University. We decided to move into a two-bedroom apartment together after becoming good friends. I go to my room, lay on my bed, and stare at the ceiling. I have three exams this week and a ton of homework to do, but I can't bring myself to start studying. A few months ago, I received the worst news I could possibly receive. My dad had a heart attack. My mom didn't tell me until he was out of danger, but that didn't make me feel any better. My family lives in Arizona, where I was born, but since I'm at NYU on scholarship, I couldn't even see him. Ever since, my father has been sick and my mom has to work more to pay the bills, leaving my little sister in the hospital, staying with my dad. I've thought about leaving New York. A lot. I was supposed to be the miracle of the family. The financially successful one, able to buy my parents a house. The reliable one. Yet, I'm here, useless, unable to do anything to help. Part of me wants to pack my bags and go home. But the other part of me knows that I can't throw all of this away. I'm so close to finishing school, so close to graduating and becoming a nurse. I can't give it up now, but I won't forgive myself if something happens to him while I'm here. I wipe away the tear rolling down my cheek. I have a job, but it is barely enough for me to pay bills and feed myself. I don't have enough money to send and help. While I'm trying to finish my education, my dad is gaining more debt with the hospital. Life isn't supposed to be this hard. My phone rings, making me jump. Hello? Emily, it's Elizabeth. Oh, I say, relieved it's not my mom with bad news. Oh, I totally forgot we were going to have lunch together. I'm sorry, I'm on my way. I reach for my purse. It's okay, I'm outside, take your time. Elizabeth is my one and only true friend. We met at freshman orientation. She was my first friend in New York, and we've been friends ever since. Peter is nowhere to be seen when I emerge from my room, so I head out, lock the door behind me, and get in Elizabeth's car. It's a sunny afternoon, but still chilly enough to be considered sweater weather. People always say Elizabeth and I could easily be sisters, and I can see why. We both have long, brown, wavy hair, brown eyes, and fair skin. We are simply different in the way we dress. She always dresses up, compared to my casual jeans, blouse, and sweater combo. Hey! I climb into the car and smile at her as she pulls away from my place. Everything okay? She asks. Yes. I pause, sighing. <sighs> no. She glances at me. You can tell me over lunch. Right now, I need food. I laugh. <laughs> Same. We go to our usual food spot a few minutes away. Patty's Diner. How's your dad? Elizabeth asks after we order. 
the same, I think. I don't know. I haven't talked to mom since last week. I reach for the letter in my sweater pocket. I got this, though, I say, sliding it across the table. She gives me a weird look, but takes it. Congratulations, she reads. Your application to the Growing Generations program has been accepted. You may now proceed to step two. She reads the rest before looking up at me, eyes wide. This isn't... I nod slowly. I don't know what to do. I mean, this is crazy, right? I've never had a baby. I've never even had sex. Okay, she says, placing her hands on the table. This is obviously a really serious decision to make. I sip my coffee. This could be a good thing, right? My parents, they need the money. Like, really need it. Emily, this is big. You have to be super sure that you are ready to do this. Becoming a surrogate first came up when I overheard a conversation between two girls in my class. They were talking about how college students are always broke, and one of them brought up stripping for money. The other one brought up surrogacy. Of course, I already knew a surrogate was someone who carries a baby for someone else. That wasn't what caught my attention, though. What caught my attention is how much money surrogate mothers make. $40,000 to $50,000 easily. That kind of money is life-changing. That kind of money can mean the difference between life and death for my dad. I decided to apply. I was feeling vulnerable and not really thinking about what I was doing at the time. I was simply desperate. Now I'm apparently ready to move to the next step. My dad needs the money, I say again, trying to convince myself. Yes, but you'll have to be physically and mentally prepared for this. It won't be easy. You'll have to go through tests and checkups after you get pregnant, and then you'll have the baby and you'll never see the kid again. I shake my head. I don't want a baby anyway. You have to think about this. Really think about this, Emily. The waiter comes with our food and we sit silently, waiting for her to go away before continuing the conversation. It's perfect timing too, I continue. By the time the baby is born, I'll be out of school. You'll be pregnant for graduation, Elizabeth interrupts. Graduation, Emily. Your graduation pictures would be ruined forever. I know you need the money, but there has to be another way. There isn't. I can't work more because I need to focus on school. You're going to be pregnant. Do you know how hard that's going to be? Not as hard as losing my dad, I whisper. She looks at me, her gaze softening. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. I know, I sigh. I know this isn't going to be easy, but I have to do something to help my family. I can't be this useless. This is what we're going to do, Elizabeth says after a moment. You're going to proceed to step two, but while we wait for more information, we are going to look for another way to earn money, fast. I nod, already knowing there isn't another way. I thought about finding another job, but I'll get behind in school. I don't have anyone to lend me that kind of money. It's just me and my family, no one else, no one who can help us. My only option is to become a surrogate. Unconsciously, my hand goes to my flat stomach and my cheeks flush. I will be pregnant without ever having sex. Am I really ready to be a virgin surrogate?